Hello Mila, hello Jack, hello everybody else who's watching. Welcome to Storytime with Grandad. Today's book is Mr. Ben, Spaceman. It was just an ordinary day in Festive Road. Boys played with toy rockets while their mothers brought home the shopping. Number 52 was Mr. Ben's house, but he was nowhere to be seen. Mr. Ben was in the back garden talking to his neighbour. Why is it, asked his neighbour, that your grass looks greener than mine? That's strange, said Mr. Ben. I always think yours greener than mine. And they both laughed. Mr. Ben decided to go for a walk in the park. He sat on a bench and watched a boy flying a kite. I wonder if it would go above the clouds if the string was long enough, he thought. It would be so interesting to go above the clouds. All of a sudden, Mr. Ben tingled with excitement as he remembered the costume shop. In almost no time at all, Mr. Ben was in the special shop where the adventures start. As if by magic, the shopkeeper appeared. Good morning, sir. I do believe you've made up your mind already. I'd like to try the spaceman's outfit, said Mr. Ben. You know the way, sir, replied the shopkeeper, pointing to the changing room. Mr. Ben changed into the space outfit. He looked at himself in the mirror and headed for the door that led to adventures. On the other side, he found himself in a spaceship. Another spaceman was at the controls. Hello, he said. Ready for the blast off? Here we go then. Mr. Ben felt the spaceship surge as it lifted off. Where are we going? said Mr. Ben as he watched the stars through the window. To a planet covered in gold and jewels. We'll be rich, said the spaceman. That would be fun, thought Mr. Ben, but all he could see was a very ordinary planet. The spaceship landed with a bump. Lying all around were lumps of glittering gold and jewels, just as the spaceman had said. We're rich, said the spaceman, and they walked around picking up the best jewels and pieces of gold they could find. All of a sudden, they met a man in rags sitting on a lump of gold. Hello, said the man. What are you going to do with that load? The spaceman laughed. We're rich. We can do anything we like. I'm afraid you're wrong, said the ragged man. It's no good to you at all. There are no shops on this planet, so there's nowhere to spend the riches. Anyway, as soon as you leave the planet, they turn into ordinary stones. The next planet is the place to be. They live in comfort and everything is free. In that case, we may as well go to the next planet, said the spaceman. So they put down their gold and jewels and made their way back to the spaceship. But Mr. Ben took one piece of gold with him to see what it would look like when it turned to stone. The spaceship zoomed away from the planet on its journey. There it is, said the spaceman as they spotted another planet coming very close. The spaceship landed near a town. Mr. Ben and the spaceman saw that the shops were full of things and nobody looked poor. At restaurants, people sat outside and ate for free. Mr. Ben and the spaceman sat down too, but something was wrong. They noticed that apart from themselves, everything looked colourless. Tell us about the dullness, they said to the waiter. Well, he said, there's no colour here at all, and if you stay here for very long, you'll be just like us. But there is another planet not far away where everything is very bright. That's for us, said the spaceman. Let's go there. I don't fancy a life without colour. Back in the spaceship, Mr. Ben watched the grey planet getting smaller and smaller as they headed towards the next planet. I hope the next planet really will be better, said Mr. Ben as they flew nearer. We'll have a good look around first, replied the spaceman, and we won't get out if we see anything wrong. Once they landed, they peered out of the windows. Everything looked all right. Colourful birds flew past. There were bright flowers and trees. They saw gaily coloured houses 
people dressed in vivid clothes were walking about. Mr. Ben and the spaceman looked through the telescopes just to make sure. The only unusual thing they could see were the hats that everyone wore pulled down over their ears. Just the fashion, said the spaceman. Let's go outside. But they soon realised that the hats were not just the fashion. Everyone had their ears covered for one very good reason. The air was filled with the most horrible screeching noises. Mr Ben and the spaceman ran back to the spaceship and took off into the night. Before they had gone far, the spaceman said, I'm lost. We'll have to stop at the next planet and ask the way. So once again they landed. This time the planet was very hot, too hot in fact, but at least it was quiet. Nobody was about. Then, as if by magic, a man appeared. It was the shopkeeper. We're lost, explained the spaceman. We've been to all sorts of planets, but don't know where to go next. There is a place that is not altogether perfect, but then there is not much wrong with it either, said the shopkeeper. We'll try there, said the spaceman. You go, said Mr Ben. I think I'll stay here. I've had enough of travelling. It's very hot, said the shopkeeper. Why don't you step into this cave? It'll be cooler there. Mr Ben went into the cave, and, as he expected, found that he was back in the changing room of the shop. He took a last look at himself in the mirror, then changed into his old clothes. Where did you send the spaceman? he asked, as he returned the spaceman outfit. Here, sir, back to earth, said the shopkeeper. It's not perfect, but it's not too bad either, Mr Ben smiled. Back in Festive Road, people went about their business as usual. At his gate, Mr Ben took the lump of stone out of his pocket. Nobody would believe that this was once gold, he thought. But I'll keep it, then I will remember. The End Goodbye, Mila. Goodbye, Jack. I'll see you soon. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.